Now <coughs> comes the question of the most I have skipped the whole issue and come straight to the key point, let us say. And I will go back to it some, some of the other theoretical issues. 27,000 rupees suppose is the price. All right. My question to this audience is, is it higher than the fair value? Is it lower than the fair value? Is it the fair value for whatever reason? Or is it impossible to know? Impossible to know. Some more tries. Sorry? It's higher than fair value. So, a few higher than fair value. A lot of us are silent because we don't want to say it's impossible to know. Some people have bravely conceded it's impossible to know. I would lean towards the fourth. It is quite impossible to know. And the reason is that nobody in the world has found a way to value gold approximate value of gold. Nobody wants a precise value, but some range, some ap approximation. All right, And that's because gold is completely unlike any other asset. The fundamental reason it's difficult to value, value almost like impossible to value, is because there's no income attached to it. If you have real estate, it will fetch rent. If you have any sort of deposits in fixed income, it will probably fetch interest. Stocks, there is a profit to back it. It may come to you in the form of dividend and bonus. It may not come at all, but at least there is a profit on the basis of which businesses can be valued. Gold fetches nothing. You buy gold, nobody is there to give you any money. Nothing. No earnings are attached to it. So, most people, have, sensible people who try to value assets, they find it really, they don't know where to start. They don't even know what is the first step to trying to figure out whether 27,000 is high or low or fair or, or whatever. By the way, anything that we cannot value on the basis of earnings, we can always value on a relative basis. Because, and that, that's a very nice way of saying that I'll pay more or less than the previous guy. Okay? So he's paid $1 million for that piece of painting. It has also no earnings. So I'll pay, you know, 10% more, not more than that. So there is a relative valuation. But ultimately, in terms of actual transaction, it is not an investment. It is a speculation. Why would you want to pay $10,000, uh, you know, $100,000 more over a million dollars to buy something? Maybe you just love it, right? So it's use. It's not a question of investments. But the moment you say it's an investment, you do expect to sell it for at least 5 rupees more, 5 dollars more. Otherwise, you would not have bought. So now you are entering the clear cut territory of speculation. So you buy, you sell. I'm not saying speculation, speculation is good or bad or whatever, but let us understand what we are doing over here. We are not valuing on the basis of fundamentals, on the basis of a preset model. We are buying on the basis of relative value. The guru of valuation in the world is, is Ashwadha Mudaran. He's an Indian professor. He's an Indian who teaches in the US. He is the last word on valuation. He's written a book. Uh, Dark side of valuation. Yes, huh? Dark side of valuation. That's a new one. But his main book is valuation. That's it. His principal book for which he is famous, and we have a copy here, called Damodaran on Valuation. He's that famous. His name is attached to the title of that book. And it is every single kind of valuation, corporate valuation, buying, selling, arbitrage, any kind of valuation you can think of, profit, non-profit, he's gone into everything. He is really the last word in valuation. And what does he say? The value of gold lies in the eye of the beholder. You want it, you pay for it. You don't pay for it with thinking that somebody else is going to pay more or less or whatever. So that's your valuation. That's not a market valuation. That's not a fair value. All right. Now, <clears throat> having said that, if those five factors are myths, if those five factors, you know, the inflation, recession, the buying of sovereign gold, India, China, all of these factors, if they are not correct, what could be the true factors? which determines the price of gold. It's not very difficult. But <clears throat> I'll come to that shortly. I just want to take you through a little bit of history on the fact that gold prices are freely traded for a relatively short period, the point that I made earlier. 
Now, America, we all know, is a land of free enterprise. It's a land where meritocracy, which means the best guy wins. He's the one who survives. It's free enterprise. People depend their liberty so very strongly. This is in April 5, 1933, about 80 years ago. U.S. President Franklin Delano Roosevelt had issued this particular order, forbidding the hoarding of gold coin bullion and certificates, including gold certificates within the continental United States by individuals, partnerships, partnerships associations, or corporations. No private holding of gold was allowed. It is allowed. You have, give it to the government. No form of gold coin bar, etc. You can have. All right. No fresh purchases ordered citizens to sell their private holding to the government at below market prices. So much for freedom, market price, so much for hedge against calamity. This was an ultimate calamity, depression of 1929-34 period. All right? And <clears throat> after a lot of requests, he raised the purchase price to market level. If you did not comply with the order, $10,000 fine at that prices. Today it probably would be $1 million, who knows. And 10 years in jail. This is a government order. No private holding of gold. So we can look at various factors which, which determines the price of gold, but bear in mind that something like this hap has happened in very recent history. So what price are we talking about? How many years back? What are the factors? We necessarily will have to look at a much shorter period because as I said right in the beginning, demands are changing, the context is changing in which you want to value gold. India. Almost similar story. Some prohibition was gold on gold existed right from 1947. We got our independence. 63 and 68 acts. A lot of provisions in the act. Essentially, in 63, making gold jewelry above 14 carats was banned. You couldn't make gold jewelry above 14 carats. A certified goldsmith could maximum get 100 grams for jewelry making. A, a licensed dealer could possess between 400 grams to 2 kilos only. There was legal ban on transaction between one dealer and the other, which means they did not want a market. Today we are very confidently looking at the prices and we are saying it's went up from here to there, we are calculating a price. There was no market, the market was banned. You are not supposed to have a market. You make your gold, sell your gold within the limits, end of the story. Gold dealers could operate only from licensed premises. This is a draconian thing that Mrs. Gandhi was doing to various people, she did that to gold dealers and gold uh, goldsmiths as well. Ban, complete ban on buying gold bars and coins. So eventually what happened, 30 to 70 percent of the so-called market and market prices for gold came to be controlled by smugglers. This ban existed right, or this ban or this condition of no market and no free and fair market prices existed right up to 1991. So effectively, if you want to talk of prices, free market prices determined by lots of willing buyers and sellers, it's 20 years, 22 years, not more than that. During the time, even before uh, Roosevelt became and issued that order, became the president, issued that order to control price of gold and therefore inflation, there was President Harold Wilson. Now, <clears throat> once again, we take it for granted that gold prices are freely traded. Here was a man who was setting gold prices every day morning on some arbitrary basis during his breakfast. $20, next is 20.1, third day is 20.2, fourth day is back to 20.15. This is what he was doing. It's documented history. This was the market. All right? And we are talking of 1920-21. We can say it's 4,000 years of history, but this is our recent history of gold in the capitalist, the most capitalist country of the world, not even of India or China, not even Mao. We are talking of Mao here. We are talking of the bastion of free enterprise. All right? In 1934, dollar and gold eventually were set at $35 set by government decree. And it continued to remain like this for decades together because they are partly in gold standard. But still there are some factors that 
researchers have been able to. There's a couple of professors in Duke University who've done a lot of work in trying to figure out what then is the key factors that move, moves the price of the gold, for, apart from all of these speculative factors. Well, <clears throat> these factors will change sometime in future. And the point I'm trying to emphasize again and again, many of these factors were not there 100 years ago or 50 years ago. They are factors now, which is why I said gold price factors now. Same product, 4,000 years later, it's a different set of factors which determine the price. Not what the Egyptian pharaohs need and what they pay for. It's a different set of factors in a modern economy, globalized economy. Gold, whether we like it or not, is still priced in dollars, dollar being the most important currency in the world. All commodities are traded in dollars. Reference price of crude, copper, everything is dollars. People quote in dollars. They don't quote in uh, sort of renminbi. They don't quote in rupees. Nobody takes rupees in the world. So by and large, if the dollar is seen to be continuously weak, the price of gold generally gets a lift. It's supposed to be going up. <clears throat> One more reason why George Soros and other smart guys moved out of gold is because despite all the so-called dollar debasement that is, you know, that we popularly sort of mouth and we popularly believe in, from June 19, from June 2011 till now, despite so much of money being printed, so-called money being printed and dollar being debased, dollar is actually up, not down. All right. So again, that is another case where the dog did not bark. Currency debasement happened. The currency did not fall. It strengthened. When something like this happens, you change your belief and you do what the prices are telling you, which is what the smart guys have did. They've sold and they've gone. For us, we don't pay in dollars. We have to convert. We pay dollars to the to the to the RBI, and then eventually we pay in rupees as an individual. So it matters hell of a lot to us. This is a very, very peculiar Indian phenomenon. If the price was gold, if the, if the value of uh, rupee was to the dollar was, let's say, 40, we would be paying much for the price of gold, much less. If it's 55, we'd be paying much more. All right. So 45 was 45, 46 was the, what the value of rupee was, or the, what the price of dollar was for us. Right from 2001, 2, 3, 4, it strengthened in 2007, rupee went down to 39, all right? When that happens, gold price will not go up, it will go down because we are, we are multiplying with a lower figure. So for us, fortunately for us, the rupee is constantly weak. When it's weak, we pay a higher price for that. So that that's why for us, the gold price is going up. One crucial factor is what is the real rate of um, interest. The real rate of interest is nothing other than nominal rate minus the inflation rate. So if the treasury, let's say, which is a benchmark bond yields, let's say, 2%, and if inflation is 1%, then the real rate of interest is 1%, 2 minus 1. If it's 5%, in our case, for instance, look at our case, a bank, FD may give you, let's say, 8.5%. If inflation is 7%, then the real rate of interest is 1.5, all right? Well, actually, our inflation is maybe 9% or 10% for us urban people. So we are always in a situation where we are getting less compared to the high inflation rate that we suffer. <coughs> How does this affect the price of gold? Internationally, people put a lot of the surplus cash. If you are if you're very rich, if you're an Arab sheikh, and if you have $100 billion to put somewhere, you, your first consideration is not to lose that money. You don't want growth. You have enough of money. Your first consideration is moderate growth, but certainly capital protection. So for you, the first choice in the world is US Treasury. It's one of the first choice. Gold-like. You say it's like gold, all right? Now, if US Treasury yield, let's say, is 2% and inflation is 3%, you're losing 1%. You don't want to lose 1% or $100 billion. You start diversifying. You'll put some money in gold. This is where popularly people think inflation, gold is an, inflation, is, a, is an hedge against inflation. It is not a hedge against inflation. It is a hedge against impact of inflation on 
uh, on a risk free bond so if inflation is 20% let's say very high inflation and if your treasury bond gives you 25% gold will not go up even though it is money will go into that 25% yielding asset why will people put money in gold because you're getting 25% 20% inflation you're getting 5% extra so when this happens when there's a negative interest what you're getting is lower than the rate of interest there is an interest in gold and that's been the situation right from 2001 to 3 and so on demand and supply of gold from central banks as we've seen in that previous colorful graph demand and supply for consumption it's an important factor and the single most important factor now demand and supply of financial speculation since 2003 if you had remove gold ETFs from the world if they are supposed to sell back sell up suppose the governments in the world have said decide that gold ETFs are banned sell your return the money what will happen to gold prices will be down to 500 dollars maybe so this this is the excessive speculation that have taken the price gold price up and that speculation has to unwind more than the debt of federal reserve or bank of japan or european central bank it is the size of the gold assets in etf which is now you know billions of dollars that has to come out because that is not making any money when it starts making money people start getting impression a little bit of withdrawal starts then the bigger withdrawals and then finally the whole concept one fine day people say hey like people say about indian stocks five years i have made no money get rid of it at the height of indian uh, when nifty was 6100 we had the one of the biggest withdrawals from mutual funds the fact that the price went up was no was no uh, cause for happiness for retail investors of equity mutual funds this was a cause for distress five years i have made no money this is how human psychology plays out in the financial markets it's not that the absolute price so these are the six factors which now are causing the price of gold to move up and down nobody there has been some attempt to use factor number 3 there's a guy called Eddie Elfin Bean he's created a model by which he can he says he can predict the price of gold movement roughly um <coughs> based on negative real interest rates and so on now this is his model so if you would see in the two periods in the last just about 20 30 years there have been two periods where interest rates have been negative in the us and these these are precisely the two periods when gold prices has gone up but this is only a sample of three in a product that has got 4000 years of history we have only a sample of three it's impossible to extrapolate draw any conclusions conclusive conclusions and it's impossible to put in your money based on three pieces of data like this nobody would do it but he he says this is fun i have figured this out use it the way you want to now <clears throat> for us none of these things mattered till now the reason they didn't matter because we have been extraordinarily fortunate as a country it's unfortunate at one level but we fortunate at our level who's buying gold or who's invested already in gold is the weakness of rupee no but no matter what happened the weakness of rupee has ensured that we get a higher price of gold now this is the first period let's say gold gold was 100 dollars per ounce in 76 this period i described went to 850 in january 1980 during this period rupee was controlled roughly around 7 to 8 rupees so including smuggling including the premium that we pay for smuggling we got the full impact of this manic stupid price rise at that time right so 7 into 100 7 into 1200 7 into 850 we kept on getting the money plus of course the money that we had to pay haji mastan and others phase 2 but didn't i tell you a phase where it dropped from 850 to 251 fortunately for us having kept the rupee controlled artificially controlled for 7 to 8 rupees for years together in 1991 july after nasima rao came become the prime minister he had to take a two step devaluation manmohan was the finance minister 25% devaluation over two two instances so we kept it control the time the price was going up when price fell 
that is as time rupee started to go weak look at the blue line the black line the red line is the is the fall in price of international price of gold the black line is the continuous weakness of rupee from 1980 onwards leading to a huge jump you can see from in 1990 it jumped like that that was when the rupee was uh, we had a two stage devaluation and then also almost made the rupee convertible because we allowed you know a lot uh, freer movement of rupee restrictions were lower if i was supposed to invest you could take money out businessmen could take money take money out and invest in the world without having without fearing that they would be put behind bars now in this entire period gold fell by 70% this is like a 21 over 21 years it's a 70% fall during the same period rupee went from 8 to 46 which is six time increase so 70% fall was more than met by a six time weakness of the indian rupee we do not hear anybody in this country talking about a crash in gold gold was 850 it fell to 251 nobody talks about that we don't know about it right and that is not because we have hit upon a great investment opportunity that is only because this country is mismanaged is massive economic mismanagement everywhere and rupee is bound to remain weak it was it was a weak currency it became suddenly became weaker and it has continued to become weaker so if you say other things being equal i will buy i will invest in gold only because the weakness in rupee will continue that's a very very valid point that's something that i agree with wholeheartedly you are likely to see a 4 or 5% devaluation according to me on a on not a regular basis not a yearly basis but on an average over a period of time what you see is 53 54 if you continue with this path of economic management that we are doing today rupee will slowly suddenly will see it's pushing 58 then it becomes 60 two years later it becomes 62 this is going to happen this is guaranteed in this whole thing of gold of so many things that we don't know this is one thing we know and this is nothing to do with international price of gold it's nothing to do with sovereign buying of gold nothing to do with panic inflation nothing it's our own failing which will lead us to a higher value of gold this is phase 3 all right <clears throat> this is phase 3 which is continuing now <clears throat> 2001 onwards uh, <clears throat> but we already are seeing the signs of gold tiring and we don't know now this is a fight between a 5% devaluation and a you know 5% fall in gold versus a 5% fall fall in rupee if they match each other then it will be staying at the same place if the gold falls more than the weakness of the rupee gold price in rupee terms will be lower the key point throughout the presentation has been it's different gold different context different factors forget the myth even the known factors are changing last 5 years so 7 years it's been a story that the world has never seen product is the same jewelry articles is the same as people say that you the gold you're using probably came out of the mouth of pharaoh 3000 years ago it could well be because it doesn't it's chemically inert it doesn't get destroyed it gets beautifully recycled all that's wonderful it may be the same gold but it's changed color it's become what i call financialized gold look at this chart this is only up to 2011 we haven't found anything <coughs> more recent <coughs> this is a straight forward 100% one is to one correlation between increased volume of gold etf traded and increased price of gold now when you look at a chart like this you have to wonder which is influencing what which is it is the volume going up because of the rising gold prices or the gold price is rising because of rising volume and more investment in etf i'll refer you to a very interesting theory and this is a theory that has made george soros a billionaire that he is today which is called the theory of reflexivity it says that rising prices attract buyers whose actions drive prices higher still until the process becomes unsustainable this is this matches beautifully with the sand pile theory i'm talking about this applies to every single product that are traded in the market 
every single product that the moment it's traded, the moment it's buyer and seller, moment there is a ticker, moment there is a CNBC anchor discussing it, this will be the story. There will be buyers who will be drawn back to higher prices, will to, which will lead to still higher prices and one fine day there will be a last pile of sand which will make the whole thing unsustainable. If there is an inherent value, it will come down to that value. It will overshoot that value and then come up again, which is what happens to stocks, which can happen to economies. As I said, Korea, it came back in no time, inherently strong country with good work ethic. <coughs> Now this is in full play in gold ETF and I said is gold price heading higher because more money in coming into ETF. Now <clears throat> I just want to summarize what we have known about gold so far. Gold has not been a freely traded product in many countries in the world. I'm sorry about that sentence is incomplete. Gold price is mainly based on movement of dollar and rupee. Gold will go up and down on US inflation, interest rates, dollar, the exchange rate between the currencies and of course demand and supply of various kinds. All right. Now in comparison to that, you have options like real estate stocks, bank FDs which are guaranteed. None of the characteristics that you see for other investment assets apply to gold. Nothing applies to gold. It doesn't yield anything, it's not guaranteed. So it's neither a stock now is it a fixed income product. It's worst of both, right? By the way, how much has gold price gone up in the last 20 years when we had all the stars lining up for gold, which is maximum speculation, massive inflow of money into gold ETF, no uh, negative real interest rate, no sovereign gold sales, and a steady increase in consumption demand. This combination of factors has not happened before. This is the best, it's a golden period of gold. 9.9% .9 before tax and before cost. All right? If you kept gold for make, if you go kept gold in jewelry form, they were making charges. If you kept it in a vault, there are charges to store. If you bought e-gold, there are charges. There are demat charges for ETF. You sell, you pay taxes. You may pay 20% tax or you pay 30% tax. It's between five, between seven to eight percent is your post tax before cost return. Seven to eight percent depends on your situation. <coughs> now, <coughs> I don't think there is a very significant advantage people would have got in investing in the gold at the bottom of the market and holding it till today. This is the best period of gold. This is not a period where you have invested somewhere in the middle. If you did that, your returns would be even lower. US, factoring in all those issues that gold has not been a freely traded commodity, $35, like a ball, it was pushed down, it went up, the price corrected upwards, you got the full impact of that, central bank sales, financial gold, all the pluses and minuses, panic, panics and crashes and inflation hedge, put in all of your factors. 4.78% is the way gold, gold, gold has gone up in dollar terms. It's gone up much more for us because rupee has been weaker. Maybe I said 4 to 5% devaluation of Indian rupee. So it roughly matches 4.78 and 4% or 5% of Indian rupee devaluation. This is the price that you are likely to get. <coughs> this is the price that you would have got if you bought gold at $35. There is no guarantee that this is the return that you would get if you buy gold, if you bought gold at $1900. Two quotes from Warren Buffett and he is a stock guy. He is one of the most successful investors in the world. So his ideas are biased in favor of stocks. He is a biased man against gold. He doesn't invest in gold. So we don't have to sort of take his word for it, but it's it's fun what he said. Golds get, gold gets dug out of the ground in Africa or someplace. Then we melt it down, dig another hole, bury it again and pay people to stand around guarding it. It has no utility. Anyone watching from the Mars would be scratching their head. <laughs> he had another quote. Very interesting. Of course, this is famous stocks, as I said. You could take all the gold that's ever been mined and it would fill a cube 
67 feet in either direction. At current gold prices, you could buy all of the farmland of the US, plus you could buy 10 Exxon Mobiles, plus have one trillion dollar of walking around money. Or you could have a big cube of metal. Which would you take? Which is going to produce more value? Uh, that I mean, we don't prescribe anything about gold, but it's one thing that I need to separate this entire presentation from. Uh, I, I've already mentioned that, but I need to reinforce that, that all that I discussed over here is only about putting your surplus money into gold as an investment as opposed to bank FD, as opposed to bond, as opposed to mutual fund, equity funds, all of that. It's only in that context that I talked about. It has nothing to do with what I call <coughs> gold in real life put it differently it is gold and money and this is gold and life they both put together is money life indians need to have gold to regularly gift use pass on it's not about money it's not about investment it's a very very important aspect of life it is social gold as i call it if you need gold and cannot bear to invest in long-term equity mutual funds buy physical gold in regular amounts don't buy ETF, don't buy anything else. Avoid any other form of gold which is exchange traded fund because you will be hit by the same problem that all exchange traded funds or buyers got get hit which is the mistakes they make in trying to time, in believing they are onto a hot thing, into a good thing and jump into an ETF. And then you would get your DMAT statement and your NAVs would be going down and you would wonder what you have done. What you have actually wanted to do is have some gold. Instead you ended up buying a DMAT number. I mean you ended up buying a stock. So to quote uh, one trader in the US who said very interestingly that we have converted gold into a stock and we are shocked how it's behaving. You know? so, so don't fall for that. If you didn't want to buy stock, you certainly don't want to buy gold masquerading or appearing like a stock in your DMAT account. These are financialized gold and market linked volatile will force you to make mistakes. This is the graphic description of that particular mistake. The bars reflect the money that people have put into gold exchange traded fund. The black line is the price of gold. See where the maximum money has come in. It has come in at the peak of the market. Again and again and again, individual investors would make this mistake the moment they look at a market link product. It's called behavioral problems. It's, uh, there is a whole field of science called neuroscience or neuroeconomics which deals specifically with this. We look at a hot product going up, watching, wondering and finally when it's hit the top we jump in right at the top. This has been there from time immemorial. This has been there in, in the 1920s. I have a thin book of a guy who went around broking offices noting down at what prices retail investors bought in 1921. 80% of the purchases were made on 10% of the top 10 prices. 80% of the purchases were within the top 10% of the peak prices. Right? This is, this is, this is us. This is humans. Nothing to do with the, you and me. Or we all make the same mistake ever and ever again. So this is a, we, we wondered whether this would happen and it's finally it has happened. We've consistently said, you want gold, buy gold. Buy gold systematically, buy gold when you want to decide this is what I want, this is the purpose I want it for. You think you bought an investment, this is the problem that you will face. <laughs> Thank you very much.